Take it! So in a couple of weeks, it'll be one year since January 6th, so all the fake news channels are doing their January 6th retrospectives. A year later, where is America? The most horrible thing that ever happened to a democracy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's all hyperbole, it's all exaggeration, it's very cheesy and often boring. Take a look. On January the 6th, 2021, a protest driven by false claims of a stolen presidential election led to an unprecedented attack on the seat of our democracy. Police officers were brutally assaulted by their fellow Americans. Law enforcement outnumbered and outflanked on all sides as they fought to defend the U.S. Capitol. The extent of the damage to our nation and our democracy may not be fully known for years, but using hours of never before seen videos obtained by WUSA 9 through a legal challenge and new interviews with those who were here that day, one thing is clear. We are a democracy divided. And these are the stories of the Capitol riot. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Unfathomable. That damage that was done to our democracy will never get to, uh, will never fully understand the scope and give me a break. By the way, the Capitol was up and running about three hours after everything settled down. This is such hyperbole. This documentary, this special feature they had from WUSA 93 News, had the standard stuff, you know, footage that we've seen before. Some we haven't, but it didn't really make too much of a difference. Um, but let's go back to the part where he said, unprecedented, unprecedented. This is the worst thing that ever happened. I'll do it again. Certainly not. Not by a long shot. Back in the 1950s, five members of Congress were shot while they were in the House of Representatives by some fanatic in the public gallery. In 1915, a bomb went off inside the Capitol. It happened again in 1980. A bomb exploded inside the Capitol. Two police officers, Capitol Hill police officers, were shot and killed in 1998 and most recently, April of this year, a police officer, Capitol Hill police officer was killed by an Islamic jihadist terrorist, all right? Never hear about that stuff for clearly political reasons. Now, he also said that you're gonna hear from voices that you haven't heard before or people who are key to this uh, whole affair. You heard these voices before and you heard what they said. This is uh, Officer Gunnell who hates members of Congress. He should not be doing that. He should not be saying that. He's still a Capitol Hill cop. He's got a gun and he doesn't like Republican members of Congress. And he talks about everything he did. He's a hero, just ask him. When I was 25 years old and then a sergeant in the army, I had deployed to Iraq for Operation Iraqi Freedom. From time to time, I volunteered to travel on, on IED infested roles, but on January 6th, for the first time, I was more afraid to work at the Capitol than my entire deployment to Iraq. Wow, ooh. It was worse on January 6th than the war in Iraq. You see where he's going? And he said this to uh, our, uh, our reporter friend from Washington. My time in Iraq doesn't compare to everything that happened here on January 6th. All right, his time in Iraq doesn't compare because a lot of people served in Iraq, a lot of people went to Iraq, and some people saw a lot. When I was there as an embedded correspondent, I saw an awful lot, but not everybody did. You could be in the Army or the Marine Corps and go there and never see combat. Uh, by the way, I went to the Burger King uh, in Camp Fallujah. Was it in Fallujah or Tikrit? I can't remember, but I went to the Burger King there. I also bought my first iPod there back in 2004. We called them iPods. Um, for some, life in Iraq wasn't that bad. For some, when I was there, uh, it was actually a hell of a lot worse than anything I saw on January 6th a hell of a lot worse. 
Hi, Rob Carson here. If you love watching Newsmax, you're really going to love listening to our new podcast. It's called the Newsmax Daily. I host it, and I give you the best briefing of the big news of the day, top newsmaker interviews, and even, yes, a few laughs. I know it's hard to believe. So if you're uh, driving, walking, exercising, just about anywhere, you can connect with the Newsmax Daily with me, Rob Carson. Find our podcast online or go to iPhone, Spotify, iHeart, Stitcher, and more, and start listening today.